Oh my god, guys, this is so freaking annoying. This is my second time recording this video because the first time corrupted. And it was a good video, man. It was a freaking good video. But enough of my whining. You are here for pre-con content. I am going to give you guys pre-con content. So with that being said, hi. Welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be doing evaluations of Valentine Shizuru as well as Muimi. And my god, have I been waiting for Muimi for like the longest freaking time. As you guys can see over here, my chibi, Muimi has actually been with us on our journey from the very start. She is certainly my favorite character in the game in terms of like characterization as well as her skill set. But with that being said, I digress. And I want to mention that the last thing I do want to talk about is whether you should actually skip Valentine Shizuru in favor of Muimi or the other way around. Because depending on your gem situation, it might actually make sense to go for one and not the other. All right, and so with all of that context out of the way, let's get right into Valentine Shizuru, who is going to be feeding you these love heart candies for the rest of your life. But before we get there, we need to go have a look at her skills. So starting off with her Union Burst, Sweet Sanctuary. Essentially, Sweet Sanctuary is kind of like your entire crux of her kit. As we eventually move into skill one and skill two, you're gonna see that Sweet Sanctuary is going to have a bearing on how those skills interact. Interact. And the reason that I bring this specific synergizing mechanic up is because we're going to be seeing a lot more of these as we go into year two. All right, and so back to Sweet Sanctuary. So essentially, it creates a field around the user. This field is 400 range from like her to behind and to the front. Then what that field does is it provides medium physical attack buff, physical crit rate buff, and TP regenerate. And by medium, it's actually quite a fair bit. So you're looking at about 1400 of the physical attack because of 120 level cap, and then 100 to the physical crit rate, which is freaking insane, and TP gain rate, oh sorry, recovery rate by five. There is no useless stat here. All of these stats are insane. And so if Valentine Shizuru only had this freaking union burst and like no skill one skill two, she'd still be super relevant. However, the reality is, is that she does have a skill one and skill two, and it only gets more cracked out from here. All right, so for skill one, Cureness Sign grants small recover HP and recover TP amounts to ally with the lowest HP. However, if we've got the Sweet Sanctuary field active, then the effect is given to all allies. So what that means is that if her UB is up, that field that she deployed, she is actually going to be healing everyone and giving everyone a whole bunch of TP. This is actually about 90 TP and if we come down to the, the action pattern, you'll see that the TP recovery as well as the HP recovery, the skill one is quite frequent. So we're going to have two actions into our skill one and then two actions again into our skill one again. From here, we have four actions before we get to skill one again and then two actions to skill one. And then from the end, we actually only have two actions to skill one again. So just by looking at this entire loop pattern, you can see that the uptime for this cureness sign is pretty insane. She is going to be healing quite a fair bit and she is going to be recovering TP quite a fair bit. I think I calculated it to be about like 90 TP each time she uses it. And so that is that is quite sizable, especially keeping in mind that a full TP gauge is 1000. It's almost 10% each time she uses it. All right. And so with that being said, let's go into the skill two, which is a medium physical damage to the frontmost enemy, as well as a small defense down. However, again, if we have the field, then the damage and the defense down is going to be increased. So without the field, I believe the defense down is about like 20 and with the field the defense down goes up to 30 defense down also keeping in mind that this is all physical defense down because she is very much a physical unit as you can see physical attack physical crit rate and then we've got over here physical defense down and so to be honest my guys this is actually really important because as we go into like the phase 3 cb bosses where their defenses are starting to climb like 300 400 500 600 and then it's starting to look a little grim you pretty much want as much defense down as you can to kind of curb it back down so you can do more damage. And so as for this defense down, as you can see, it is looping on pretty much every three actions. Skill two, one, two, three. Skill two, one, two, three. Skill two, one, two, and then back to skill two again. Quite a decent amount of uptime. And if I was to compare the skill uptime to the auto uptime, it's it's actually more. So in the long run, there's going to be six instances of the skills and five instances of the autos. And the reason that this is so important is because she needs to be casting these skills as much as she can, right? and evidently her design has allowed her to do so. And so as for utility, where exactly does this Valentine Shizuru go? So first and foremost, it is most obvious she is going to be a CB powerhouse. I can go ahead and show you some of these like CN timelines. Like you can see over here, we've got a Valentine Shizuru. We've got another Valentine Shizuru over here. And honestly, whilst we're looking through the sheet, I want to show you guys like the occurrences of the Muimis as well. V Shizu, V Shizu, V Shizu, V Shizu. Where is Muimi actually? What I do want to say is that Muimi actually does occur a 
a lot as well. Coming back over to this side, we've got Valentine Shizuru, more Valentine Shizuru, more Valentine Shizuru. And if you actually go ahead and have a look at the comp numbers, so this is 3.7 mil damage, you'll realize that Valentine Shizuru makes like some of these comps very, very competitive. And I know that it looks like there is a lack of Muimis, but there really is not. What I'm trying to do here is really illustrate how important both Valentine Shizuru and Muimi are. All right, so with that being said, we can come back to Valentine Shizuru and talk about, well, what is her recommended star level? I'm pretty sure from now until the end of time, Valentine Shizuru is going to stay at three stars. And a massive reason is generally because of TP gain rate. We certainly do want her UB to be going off as much as possible to augment the skill one and the skill two. And so generally speaking, leaving her at three stars is going to allow us to do that. But if you had to ask me and ask me what I would do, I would slam her at five stars. Obviously this time I'm not going to do that as much as I want to. So guys, follow my good example and just keep her at three stars. In terms of equipment and bricking and skill levels and stuff, I'm actually coming out with an anti-brick guide very, very soon. It's probably going to be the next video. So if you are looking for information in regards to equipment as well as skills, like just stay tuned. In the context of PvP, Arena, P Arena, she's okay, but she's not like, like insane. There are certainly comps that she would actually enable, but I wouldn't say that she is like an absolute hardcore necessity like some of the other powerhouses are. All right, and so with that being said, let's head over to Muimi and do a quick evaluation on her, considering she is coming right after Valentine Shizuru. All right, so Muimi in a nutshell is like, she has two stances, a short sword form and a great sword form. Depending on which form she's in, she actually gets skill changes, very, very similar to the Valentine Shizuru. And so when she starts out in battle, she is actually in short sword form. And only when she uses her UB Spires Bane Blade, I'm not gonna even try this one over here, does she actually go into her great sword form. So like I said, for her UB, she inflicts large physical damage to the frontmost enemy. But then after that, she goes into her great sword form, changing other skill effects until TP reaches zero. Now, a full TP gauge is required to activate the skill, but when you actually click the skill, the TP gauge is not consumed. However, the TP consumption model for this skill is actually consuming 100 TP per second. And so what that means is that at the start of the battle, you have zero TP, and then you're like gaining, 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 and then you hit 1K TP. At that point, you hit the UB button, but it's not gonna go down to zero. It's gonna still be at 1K. It's from then on that every second that passes, you will consume 100 TP. Bam, 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 all the way down to zero. So typically speaking, it lasts about 10 seconds. However, and like my memory is a bit hazy, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that when she takes damage or if she deals damage or if she like kills enemies or if she gets like TP gains from other units, stuff like that, she is actually able to kind of like slow the decay of the bar, right? So if it's coming down, it's coming down and she like attacks somebody, it goes back up and then just keeps going down. I'm 99% sure that is how she works. It's been a while since I've played JP. And so if that one is a mistake, please correct me. But yeah, this UB is going to be the introduction of her weapon switching mechanic. So moving on to skill one over here, I'll make you fear is her short sword skill. Inflicts medium physical damage to enemies within the front line, targets are knocked back a small distance and also inflicts stun to the targets. So to really summarize this, it's essentially Nozomi stun, except a little bit better. The stun lasts for 1.5 seconds, but it also actually knocks them back by 200 distance. So if you guys can imagine Nozomi stun where she does like that thing and then everyone's like, oh, this is pretty much like that, except they go like, oh, that is, however, her short sword form. So if we have a look at her long sword, sorry, her great sword form, it is actually just straight up massive physical damage. And this kind of trend actually extends into skill two over here. So if we have a look at the great sword one first, it is large physical damage. And so just quickly looking at this one over here, small physical defense down to the front line, which means that this is an AOE fizz defense down. And doing a quick calculation over here for skill level 120, which equates to 45 physical defense down AOE, we can start seeing like the differences between the short sword and the great sword. In a nutshell, short sword is pretty much for like some utility. As you can see, we've got the fizz defense down as well as a stun. And great sword is in essence damage. It really is like your Kari, your Hiyori, your Arisa, your New Year's Hiyori. It's pretty much just big damage and that is it. And so with all of that in mind, let's come down to the moveset pattern and this is where it just gets really freaking cracked. So from the get-go, she does the defense down and then immediately stuns everybody in the front. After that, she goes into the loop pattern for her short sword so she does the defense down quite a fair bit and then the stun. And the overall time spent in the skills is actually more than the normal attack. So one, two, three, four versus one, two, three. And honestly, that's quite nice. However, the really, really cracked part is this one over here where she enters her greatsword form. And so when she does enter her greatsword form, all she's doing is massive physical damage, large physical damage, 
massive physical damage, <laughs> large physical damage, and that is it. Like it literally is the epitome of damage where she is literally just like doing chunk after chunk after chunk of damage. And so hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of like what Muimi is capable of. And really this should have been like your expectations for this character considering she is a pre character, or as we like to call it on global, a gala character. In terms of PVP, CB, Lunar Tower or whatever, she is pretty much universally used. She is used in PVP, she is used in CB, in particular. She is used in Lunar Tower in the new dungeons as we get them, in the event bosses, everywhere. She is essentially like gonna very much be like Makoto and Christina because like we've almost never not used Christina, right? In terms of star level, you do want to juice her up to five stars and that kind of counteracts like the whole, oh, should we keep them at three stars to make sure that they UB as much as possible? The answer generally for main DPSs such as like Muimi, Kari, Hiyori, Shiori, it's generally gonna be no. And the reason why is because this physical attack, the the scaling that you get from going to three to five stars, it's typically going to outweigh any gains that you get from like having a little bit potentially more union burst uptime. A lot of the time, leaving them at three stars might not actually even get you an extra UB. Although sometimes this certainly is the case. So I remember like Tomo 4 versus Tomo 5 or another clan battle boss, Kyoko 4 versus Kyoko 5. I remember the Kyoko 4 was getting an extra UB off because she was a little bit more fragile. But yeah, generally speaking, Muimi is certainly going to go to five stars. And as for equipment, again, and stay tuned for that upcoming guide. All right, so with all of that being said, Muimi versus Valentine Shizuru, who is more important? This honestly shouldn't be a question. Like if you had saved your gems properly, you should be getting both Valentine Shizuru as well as Muimi. However, not everybody's perfect. Not everybody has good luck or even average luck. And so I'm going to cover off a couple of different cases, right? Coming over here to this schedule. And if you guys have not seen this schedule before, just know that the ordering is correct. And like these generally are correct, but the months are not correct. So as you can tell, we're not in December anymore and we are getting Valentine Shizuru very soon. Valentine Shizuru is right here. And so let me have a look at the timeline as to where Valentine Shizuru is going to appear next. So la da 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 da, you don't see her. And if I keep scrolling over to the right, you're actually not going to see Valentine Shizuru for a very, very long time until next year. And so this is very much like the Skiaru dilemma, right? If you don't get summer Kiaru during the summer, then you're going to have to wait until the next year. And that is certainly going to affect like our decisioning in terms of rolling for Muimi or rolling for Valentine Shizuru. The other piece of information that we do need to know is this one over here. Muimi is going to come and I do believe that she is going to arrive as I talked about before on the special update two of the first anniversary. In my last video, I said this was special update number one and they must have put that there for a reason. I think that there is going to be a special update number two and I think that is going to contain Muimi as well as the 140 free rolls on her banner. With all of this information in mind, should you roll for Valentine Shizuru or should you roll for Muimi if you are under constraints? The first consideration is that if you have less than a spark, then the only logical answer is to actually roll for Muimi over here, considering we are getting pretty much a discounted spark. 140 Muimi free rolls essentially means that we only have to put in 160 to guarantee her. And so in terms of like the safest option, if you have less than a spark, you're probably going to be going for Muimi here. Now, the next situation is if you have one whole spark or maybe a little bit more than a spark, then I would say it's gonna be Valentine Shizuru. So say you have like 55K gems and a spark is about 45K and you really do unlock sack and you have to spark for the Valentine Shizuru that's gonna put you down to 10K jemmies. If you have 10K jemmies and you have Valentine Shizuru, then you can come over here and hopefully potentially through all of these events, through Lunar Tower, through some of these other gem acquisition methods, you can hopefully combine them with the free gacha rolls and get your Muimi. But with this method, there is actually a plan B and that is this banner over here, the Oedo Kuka. So for you guys who don't know, these festival banners, these gala banners actually have all of the previous festival units. Now, although a unit is on a festival banner like this one over here, Oedo Kuka, and then if I scroll up a little bit, you'll notice that the New Year's Yui was on a festival banner. It does not mean that they are actually a festival unit, right? So New Year's Yui is not a festival unit and I don't believe Oedo Kuka is either. On the other hand, Muimi is actually a festival unit and so is Christina if I'm able to find her over here. So what I'm trying to say 
is that every time there is a festival, we can get the festival units again. So in this case, Muimi and Christina. And so if you miss out on Muimi over here, you could technically go for a Spark or maybe Luxac into a Muimi on the Oweda Kuka festival banner. However, I do have to warn you that the odds are pretty low as you can see over here. On the Oweda Kuka banner, Muimi is sharing the percentage of the base three-star pool. And so what this means is that the rate up of Muimi is going to be the same as the rate up of Makoto, of Jun, of Ruka, etc. But the saving grace of this is that it is a guaranteed way to get your Muimi as well as your Valentine Shizuru. Hopefully, if you can save a spark from here all the way to March. And so that is my reasoning, my rationale for like potentially if you had to skip Muimi the first time. Because you really do want to ensure that you get a Valentine Shizuru as well as a Muimi. Whether you get her here or here, it doesn't really matter because it's only going to be a two month gap. The other option, which is the really nuclear option, like if you can't get a spark by that time, is to wait until the Neneka banner in August, which is eight months away to get the Muimi. I honestly can't really tell if this is worth it because an eight month gap is a lot harder to stomach than a two month gap. And so yeah, that's essentially the Valentine Shizuru and Muimi gacha strategy. And so in summary, if you are really broke as hell, you don't even have one spark, you're probably going to be going for the Muimi banner. Hopefully by the time she comes and with all of these like awesome generous gifts that Crunchyroll is giving out, you will have enough to safely guarantee her. If you do have at least one spark, then I would probably be going for Valentine Shizuru and then hoping, praying that you luck sack on the Muimi banner. And if you really don't luck sack on the Muimi banner, you've used up all the free rolls and you have some gems left but not enough for a spark, then you could consider waiting up until the March Oedo Kuka festival banner. And boy, if you're really down bad, then you really could wait until the Neneka one although yeah again I'm not sure about that one so yeah that's it in a summary hopefully that made sense to you guys hopefully you guys are not broke as hell and so with that I want to ask you guys how many jemmies do you have saved up? I want to know if you guys have been disciplined or if you guys have been luck sacking or if you guys have been watching enough of these videos to know that you need to save up for the Valentine Shizuru as well as the Muimi. In essence, you're sharing with me your bank account and so if you guys could drop your bank accounts and their balances down in the comments below, I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video and so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you guys did like this video, then please consider a like and if you would like to see more, then please consider a subscribe. But hey, as Valentine Shizuru once said, all good things must come to an end and she also kind of said like the ara ara true story but anyway thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye